Uniquely located at the tri border of Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda, the Kabaterina farm, Shenyi, is one place that makes farming really, really cool. This international culture center is about 75 kilometers from Bara town and attracts both eco and agro tourists. This is no ordinary story. This is an adventure you can't miss. Coming up on Seeds of Gold, we look at mixed farming with great emphasis on maize growing on a large scale. It is good to, 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 to do mixed farming. When the cows don't get, give us mil, enough milk, we can get uh, maize, we get posho and we drink, we are okay. After a drive of over two hours from Barara, we finally arrive and the farm is nothing less of breathtaking. We get a warm, joyful welcome from son and mother. When you meet Anne for the first time, it's not obvious that she is the success behind the Kabetaraine farm. Anne runs her mixed farm with support from her son Evans, who will be talking to us later on the show. I'm called Anna Kabetaraine. I'm a mother of five. I have grandchildren and I live in Shane. I'm a farmer. I planted maize on 17 acres. Contrary to common assumption, it takes quite a long process for maize to mature and reach the harvest level. Let's take you back to when the maize has just been planted on this 17 acre farm, as Kebateraine explains. We first just clear the land. The, the, the garden, then we plant. It is now about one week. Now we have finished planting. Now we are going to choose. We are going to make a show. We are going to soaking. Om maize. Can you bring me some nungi? Om bagur karicha. Abu kwa bi nimbi bo nungi. Eyoruko mangu nungi biara neruge yokuronge. So now we are going to soaking for 24 hours. Then um cashish and tan hikubiar. Kan kunkwani bibiara ni devango nabi home mezi ni mitumu kachuchu a hantuaru kwa kabunda. Then tubiara that day. No via kurara the next day ningarka ni bibiar. So tinka was a kubiari bicholi and tar so kindi. E chwichi bidetera kurgayoje, kurgo kuzumu kurunji, kan olevi na magarama nunji no bara omishana, the whole of this week no mshana gun, kwa kan olevi na magarama runi. Maze is one of the staple foods commonly grown by families in Uganda. But how long does one have to wait to start harvesting? And how much, for example, is Anne expecting from such a big field of maize? I have uh, planted about uh, 80 kilograms of maize. And uh, they told me that this, this, this type it is for a short, short season. Now it is going to take about three months to the harvest. If they yield well, I will get about 150 bags or more. By the time I started specializing on all maize, I got 75 bags. It was only on this part, only this part here. But now we have added on the other part. So I, I see that I can get much. In three months' time, Anne Kabetaraine expects to start harvesting since the type of maize growing on the farm takes a shorter time to mature. She used 80 kilograms to plant and expects to get over 150 sacks of maize. If a kilogram goes for 1,500 Ugandan shillings, 100 kilograms per sack will get you 1.5 million Ugandan shillings. So, if you multiply that by 150 sacks, that is roughly this is good business, but only if the market prices are good. Sometimes uh, in Kampala, after harvesting, preparing them, I just send them to Kampala. Mm. All local here. Our local Nanka traders here. The beauty with mixed farming and cash crops is that the recycle time is usually conducive. Anne is able to harvest twice or thrice a year on the same land with different crops like beans, maize, etc. I had planted maize first. Now this is the second time. 
Now, after harvesting this season, I don't know, I will plan and see what else can I put in. But I was planning to put in sorghum. She had this to share with those who want to start maize growing. Interestingly, Anne is not only in maize growing. I just graze cattle and I have banana plantation. We sell about twice a month. I can get about 500 bunches of matoke. And I sell one bunch of matoke at around 12,000 or 13,000. It depends. And I, I plant beans, sometimes beans, millet and whatever. But now I have decided to concentrate on maize because it has at least a, uh, is a labor. Even if you have one million, even if you have 0 0.5, you can begin with a little. Just a, a small garden, you just put in your, your maize, and then when it comes out, then you continue. It doesn't need to put in more money as you are beginning. It is better you begin with the little you have. Because I know farming, really, you can get something. You cannot fail. Kabataraine has been awarded and recognized from farming and she does not regret it. There was a competition of uh, those people who use these circle, uh, circle uh, loans. So I got a, a, a prize. It is at home. I will show it to you. And they, they gave me, I was the fourth in the whole of Uganda. I was the fourth. So they, give, they gave me two million. 2.2 million. Mm. She has made a name out of farming plus many other achievements. I, I sell about 150 uh, liters of milk. The, the money I, I, go, I, got, I get from uh, the cows, we have uh, uh, managed to, to, to build those houses we have seen. The tourism, we have a tourism project here. So we have the money from the farm, the money from Matoka and the maize and whatever we get from this farm, we have constructed those three houses for the project of tourism. Of course, it has not been a bed of roses like many of us would assume. Anne has faced a lot of challenges, but she chooses to move on. We don't have enough laborers because they have their own gardens. It is rare to get many uh, as for example, like this time, everybody is running to his garden and planting because the season is too short. So it is very difficult for me to get liberals. And another thing, it is the drought. So we would encourage the government, even they can give us this, this system of, of irrigation, that system of irrigation. At least if I can use that irrigation for this my cassoli will be okay. With maize growing, there is a lot one can get. After harvesting, you can use the combs and maize leaves for mulching. From maize, after harvesting, I take those leftovers over, I take them to banana plantation for mulching, so that the weed will not come more weed. Mm. And, they, and even they, they, are, they, are, they work like fertilizers. And advises the youth in a very strong way. Yes, I encourage people to do that mixed mix, uh, farming. Because if this one fails, you can get something from this one. So it is good, it is good to, 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 to do mixed farming. When the cows don't get, give us mil enough milk, we can get uh, maize, we get posho and we drink, we are okay. But I am encouraging the youth. For example, me, I am old. Now I need someone who is younger to be to stand in my feet. So when I die, like when I die, everything is going to die. So I am encouraging the youth, especially my sons, my daughters, to come and take over, and even the youth outside, to know that if you are doing Nanka farming, really it is it is gold. You get a lot of money. You have to eat. So everything is in the farm. So I am encouraging the youth not to go looking for jobs. There are jobs at their homes. They should begin at the, their homes, get holes, till the land, and they will get what they want. When we return, get to know how farming is fun, plus 
get an expert opinion on how to grow maize commercially. It was a good feeling walking around this farm. Indeed, this will turn into a serious tourism center. We are chasing time as the sun is about to set, but the team and I had to check out the rest of the farm. Whoa, the cows here? Grazing on free range but looking awesome? Okay, let the good memories begin. Cows are just peaceful and are very useful to human nature. If it were possible, everyone could own a cow just to have the experience. Give it grass and water and you will be sorted. That is, mainly for the free range. As we were still enjoying the beautiful animals in their territory, we landed on this swing in the wilderness. Amazing sight! I had a few questions for Evans, the youthful son of Anna. Value addition comes in many ways. Well, you know, we, we decided to take agriculture to a different level. I think uh, when you go everywhere you go, people do just about the same things. But we thought if we could just put some spunk into agriculture or uh, put like look at look at look at agriculture from a different perspective. So we decided instead of just milking cows and then selling the milk, we get somebody to actually come visit, see how we milk the cows, have him milk the cows, and then in addition to them milking the cows, they pay us to milk the cows and then we sell the milk how about matoke same idea you get matoke instead of somebody i mean they come here we feed them matoke and then we get them to cut down the matoke and go through the process of preparing matoke but in the process they pay us for coming to do the same things and then we also sell matoke so the unique place about here is uh, we looked at agriculture and just made it funky. So you can see we have swings in the wilderness because farms are not supposed to be boring places. You're supposed to come to a farm like this one and have a good time. So while you're interviewing me, I'm kind of doing the swinging because it's a good time. So, uh, so our farming, I mean, you've heard my mama, she explains the, the process of farming and was making uh, kind of plea to the youth. It is supposed to be fun and it is fun. It's a longer process, so that means the fun lingers on a little longer. But that's the idea of farming. So that's the unique uh, perspective of our farming here in Ishenye. Agro-tourism. Uganda is going the tourism way. We thought we'd just be the pest setters. So if you come here, visit us, or you come check out farming, or you can do it at your own farm, in your own farm. It's, it's a good life. It's a good time to be alive now. Talking agro-tourism, what kind of people have you been able to host in this place? Any international tourists? What we've seen is we've had people from all over the world. Every continent has been represented. Most countries more often than once they come here. We've had, although we treat everybody different, I mean equally, not differently, we treat them uh, equally, but we've had some celebrities, we've had some uh, royalty from other countries and other kingdoms. We have people from, uh, you know, the highest in terms of uh, societal hierarchy and the lowest. I mean, everybody's welcome. So. When you listen carefully to this young man tell the story from deep down in Shenyi, you would want to relocate. I mean, why not? Ecotourism comes with this whole package. It's really fun. Fresh air. This is one of the classic things that all of us have in Uganda. We have it in Abanas, but we, we kind of package, you know, air. We sell fresh air here. I uh, just come and relax. Fresh air. We do uh, fishing. We have a fishing pond, so in the evening people come and they'll go and do some fishing. Uh, like I pointed out, we do some milking, we do herding cows. Uh, we do like recreational, it's called ecotourism. How can you just enjoy the nature, the wild, and also just preserve it? So we put a swing here in the trees, there are quite a few around. We have uh, recreational tourism. We have a basketball court, we have a volleyball court, we have mini soccer, uh, we have like board games, and uh, we have a, a, a bath, it's called uh, Inrunyankore. Uh, it's called uh, a shabko. So we, we, we get herbs during the rainy season and then we put them in a, in a nice place that, uh, that is like a basin. We, we just built a concrete basin. We, we boil it and then it's herbs. So you soak in there, cleanses your uh, system, your skin. You know, you come out, you sleep like a baby. It's, uh, we're using what we have, you know, naturally a, a gift to read. That's what we use. And so Evans, say something to the fellow youth watching the show right now. 
the best time of life is when you have all the energy. So for the youth, look at me. I'm good looking and I got some good brains. And I'm into agriculture. So it's not for like nerds or people who are not uh, exciting. Agriculture is so cool. So what I would say for the youth is if you take interest, you don't have to have a farm like this. You can have a farm like this. But if you take in interest in agriculture and look at it from an uh, innovative way, and uh, there's a lot of opportunity in agriculture. Most people don't see that because they're not looking at it as a place where there's potential and there's a lot of potential in agriculture. If the youth are encouraged to see that and also because they have the potential to do good. So I think if we look at them, I look at the youth as, uh, as amazing people that just need a little bit of nudging and encouraging and they can do phenomenal stuff. We now analyze maize growing to be specific in a more professional way as the expert takes us through the key things to consider. But going into maize business, it is starts from the garden. So if you're a businessman who, is, who wants to invest into maize, know the target period. When do we plant maize? Maize is supposed to be planted early March or middle March. And when to plant, uh, uh, if you are to plant early March, middle March, know the type of maize I'm planting. Does it take 120 days, 90 days? Because they are types. Is long in a, 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 a 10 H, is long a 5, is long a 4, is Pana 67, and other types. Those are just types, varieties there. But each variety has a specific time it takes to mature. We call it maturity period. So look at the maturity period. Does this need 90 days? Yes, let me go into this. Because those are three months. When I catch it between now and the time when I expect the rain to disappear, it will be at least somewhere. After digging holes, don't just plant maize direct. Put in something. In Anika, we use uh, about close to 10 bags of poultry litter. That litter that comes from poultry house. At least you just put a handful in every hole. That is enough for maize to give a very good cob. Also key to note is whether there is ready market for maize growers in Uganda. Is it a venture worth investing in? Don't sell from there. Don't sell from the garden. Don't sell in the Kaga, as they call it. People come and buy before harvesting. I give you, I think you just say to, to, to harvest, they say two tons. Let me give you money before you, you harvest so that you can sort out your businesses. Then I come later, you give me your money. No, they I mean, they cheat you. Instead, you just, today there is something they call agricultural insurance. They can, you can insure your maize, they give you money, you do your business, when the money comes, you pay them back. Me, I, mean, I told you I'm in produce marketing. I cannot hesitate to tell you that we make very, very good profits from you, people outside there. You sell me a grain today is at 1,200, 300. When I mail it, I get portion or maize flour. A kilo today goes for 2,500. You see that big difference. From 1,500, 1,200 to 2,500. You took six months to produce a, a kilo. Me, I bought, you a, I bought from you a kilo, and now I'm selling it. From just one week, it takes me one week to buy this kilo from, say, Mobende, a maize corridor, or G, uh, Iganga, or Kamuli, or Chiboga and transport it to Kampala where I have my meal. A close to one week. And then I start selling it, marketing it outside. I go to Nachivobo, where we know, and I sell a kilo at 2,500. We have made money through farming. And the people outside, they are sitting there, they are saying there is no money in agriculture. So the people are looking at us, they are saying there is no money in farming. But here we see us, we are making money, we are driving cars, that money we've got from farming. So the market is there. We, maize today is going to TZ, Tanzania. You go to that border, Motukula border, you find the car packed. Maize coming from Chiboga to there. So the market is there at a very good price. Maize goes to Kenya, maize goes to Juba, maize goes to Rwanda and other places. So the market is there. 
Interesting to note is that in just about three weeks when we visited Anne, the maize had tremendously grown and in a few months she will be harvesting. How hard can this be? It was a journey worth taking. Just to remind you, this place is about 75 kilometers from Barra. Thank you all so much for watching the show. Seeds of Gold is here to change your perception on agriculture. Take the time and learn. Next week on Seeds of Gold, we look at zero grazing at a high level. Get to know how you too can make hay for your cows.